In 2012, Halo 4 came out and 343 took over, releasing their first Halo game and gave players a taste as to what to expect from the future with them at the helm of Halo. And with Halo 4 came a new game mode known as Spartan Ops. And while Spartan Ops would have over 50 different chapters in it across its entire release on Halo 4, which are now all available on the Master Chief Collection, to this day, there's not a lot of talk or appreciation going towards Spartan Ops. If anything, a lot of people really didn't like Spartan Ops, which is interesting because conceptually, Halo 4 Spartan Ops was actually amazing, which is almost the worst part of the whole situation because it didn't end up turning out to be what a lot of fans really wanted it to be. So what ended up happening, really? So what wasn't there to like about this idea? Imagine a Halo game having post-game content where all of a sudden our very own Spartans were canon in a new story taking place after the campaign that would be supported for several weeks with over two hours of gameplay in each episode. The game would feature key characters, amazing cutscenes. It actually had a pretty decent story alongside it, especially for something that wasn't intended on being a main part of the narrative. All the ingredients of something incredibly special were here, this sounds like something Halo fans would really get into, and for a while there were even hints at a potential Season 2 one day down the road, likely if Spartan Ops was deemed popular enough, which later ended up happening as a comic book instead. But before we can fully understand what happened here, we kind of have to go back a couple of years in Halo history. Let's look at 2009. Halo 3 ODST introduced the first ever FPS narrative, sorry Halo Wars, that wasn't centered around the Master Chief, and it showed that the formula of having a smaller scale story centered around navigating smaller spaces with quite a few firefight-like encounters could work and be beloved by fans at the same time. And alongside ODST's release, we would see a firefight mode that would be introduced to Halo for the first time. That was right around a time where wave-based survival games or survival modes were starting to get really popular. Like for instance, just back a year earlier, Call of Duty World at War introduced zombies for the very first time to the Call of Duty franchise. Gears of War 2 had had a horde mode, and it seemed like the endless mode where you're surviving against all odds with a limited amount of lives was really fun. But a year later, when Halo Reach rolled around, Firefight would return, but with the amount of changeable variables added into game settings with Reach, it seemed like Reach was drifting away from the longer paced survival gameplay, and the faster paced blast all the enemies experience began to take over in popularity, as it also served as a PvE alternative to level up in the game as well. So despite the outcome of how Spartan Ops ended up being perceived, I don't think I can justify criticizing 343 Industries too much for the conception of Spartan Ops as the next step as to where to take Firefight and the gameplay into the future. I think the idea itself was really good and really revolutionary for Halo. Not only could they tell a bonus narrative, but they could evolve a game mode that was already popular into a more key game type that would appeal to the Halo fans that loved campaign and the Halo fans that just wanted to mess around and level up their Spartans at the same time. But there was one really big problem that became pretty apparent the first few episodes in that may have been a major flaw that was the catalyst to Spartan Ops losing its player base. It may have been that 343 Industries banked a little bit too heavily on the firefight gameplay based around the Halo 4 gameplay itself to carry the weight of the experience on its shoulders when ultimately Halo 4's core gameplay just didn't work well enough to carry on that burden for an entire game mode that players would experience for likely well over 20 hours. Now, we've all heard various arguments as to what is going on with Halo 4's campaign, and for better or worse, we can all at least agree that there was something different about the way that Halo 4 approached its campaign and the way that the enemies played and the way that the sandbox played as opposed to other Halo games like Reach or Halo 3. And if we look at Spartan Ops, the sheer number of chapters that were available in Spartan Ops, you have to wonder as to how much of a mountainous task it must have been to try to make unique experience in essentially 50 different levels when in a typical game development cycle, it takes multiple years to even curate a simple 10 level campaign in Halo. Halo 3 ODST worked because it took 10 similar but equally different environments and Bungie crafted 
different and unique experiences into each level. ODST was different from Halo 3 too, as ODST had a different health system and the dynamics between enemies felt different, and the pacing was drastically different of that of Halo 3. When it was time for Spartan Ops to go under development, 343 Industries put themselves in a position where instead of looking to craft core experiences, they had to fill 50 levels with content that players could experience. Honestly, I don't see in any scenario where 50 levels could all be individually crafted and provide some sort of a very unique experience, especially with the game really only being in a full development cycle of about maybe two years. And we can tie that together with the likelihood that 343 had to utilize repeated locations from parts of the campaign or multiplayer maps, where very quickly, if you were playing through Spartan Ops, it definitely seemed like there was more and more filler content that ended up not being able to become a more crafted experience. Sure, Firefight had its replayability and you were just blasting away, and I think if Spartan Ops was just a Firefight game mode on its own, it probably would have been well accepted or at least somewhat more accepted, but by marrying a narrative experience to longer, stretched out gameplay, ended up making moving through each chapter more and more exhausting. And seriously, the formula that was used in these levels really starts to show after a while. In essence, it slowly turned into a go investigate area A, clear some enemies out, go to area B, flip this switch, ambush attack, get ready, hold out till help arrives, and then you have to kill literally every single enemy and then the mission is finally complete. And as you go along, quite a few instances you would see repeat levels that were in a previous chapter you may have just experienced a few hours before. Now, of course, going back to this, I've been revisiting Spartan Ops for quite some time, as Luke and I are both going for 100% completion in the Master Chief Collection, and a lot of those last set of achievements are tied to Spartan Ops, specifically complete Spartan Ops on Legendary Solo, which this right here is a downright awful experience. Obviously, back in the day, Spartan Ops was intended to allow up to four players to go in there, kill some stuff, have a good time with your buddies, but by putting this achievement behind Legendary Solo in the Master Chief Collection, is actually so mind-numbingly challenging. First of all, there's no enemy scaling for you being in this solo, and a lot of times Spartan Ops just throws multiple extremely tough enemies at you, more than anything you would see in a typical Halo campaign. But since four-player legendary is usually such a breeze, it probably was assumed it would be manageable, but solo? I'm pretty confident there was close to no time to balance things out for this, and it wasn't even a consideration. It's not even like it's trying to to be this end-all end-game challenge here, it just feels like poor game design from a solo perspective, as you will constantly be immensely outnumbered in most of these levels. There were times where I got bored taking my time using strategy to pick off some Promethean Knights from far away, so I just ended up using the strategy of throwing myself at the enemies time and time again, picking them off one at a time until they were all dead, and it turned out to be a much faster process than me actually trying to go slow and use a strategy. In some cases, there were chapters where I died over 70 times, and I'm not the best Halo player in the world, but is Legendary difficulty supposed to be seemingly harder than Halo 2 Lasso? Because at least when we played through Halo 2 Lasso, I felt like I needed to pick the right strategy, and that there was always an approach to what I was doing. It wasn't just some random all-out attack where I would just throw myself time and time again till something finally worked. Now to be fair, with Spartan Ops, a lot of my core opinions are rooted in my current playthrough, where Luke and I have been individually working on that legendary solo achievement for so damn long. At the very least, I do have to say I can appreciate that there were some changes, at least, with the second half of Spartan Ops, which released as DLC. After episode 5, the next set of episodes were a downloadable content released for Halo 4, and all of them are in MCC, and I will say that there is an improvement behind the second half. There's some new scenery, new animations, some new areas, and more varied gameplay. Also, the story was a little bit more upbeat with higher stakes relating to Crimson themselves. However, a lot of the core issues still persist. And since you still need to play through the first five episodes before getting to the second five episodes, it seems like it's important to root a lot of these criticisms in the initial experience that 99% of players had. Now, don't get me wrong, I really appreciate how some sections were designed, and even how some areas were reutilized from the campaign and multiplayer. I appreciate the ambition, the goals, and the surprisingly interesting story. I mean, some big
big narrative stuff happens here. Halsey loses an arm, Requiem explodes, hello? But I think things could have been different because there's a lot of talent that went into this project, but it seemed like there was some overhead goal at one point to stretch out this feature of the game way longer than it ever needed to be. The indecisiveness as to whether or not they wanted this to be more of a narrative game or more of a firefight game actually ended up shooting it in the foot because if they would have condensed it down into a shorter experience using a lot of the design philosophy that ended up working well and focused on using the sandbox to create different types of experiences in each episode instead of repetitive experiences, it probably would have been much more beloved and a really, really cool feature to see. Say if instead of going for the 20 hour long stretch that were the 50 levels of Spartan Ops, they went for a five or six hour version like ODST's campaign, I think fans would really get behind it and it probably would be a fan favorite experience from a Halo game. Nonetheless, this is of course our own personal opinions as to what went wrong with Spartan Ops in Halo 4. There was definitely a lot of potential. This is something that I would love to see return in the future in a different format and a more condensed format. And maybe with Halo Infinite and the fact that they're going to support that game for 10 years, we might see more narrative expansions that might take the approach of Spartan Ops, but maybe condense it down and make it a more carefully crafted experience. What did you think about Spartan Ops? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, check out our Discord. There's a link in the description down below. We also have a podcast with a new episode finally on its way, so you guys can check that out too. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.